Welcome back to more Drunk Ranking. Uh, last time some of you gave me shit over Barefoot Pink Moscato. So look, here, it's whiskey. I have whiskey. I was already very drunk when I started filming that video. I'm actually fairly drunk right now. Um, I needed it today because I watched... Paranormal activity. Skull, I guess. So that was the whiskey. Tonight, I will be drinking lemonade with Svetka. Blue Raspberry Svedka is the most dangerous material on Earth. It'll knock you on your ass before you even notice. I love it. I love the bisexual color scheme. So, uh, after the Ernest franchise, I ran a poll for which franchise I should look at next. It was Paranormal Activities versus uh, Fast and the Furious. And I thought Fast and the Furious was going to win that or that it would at least be pretty close, but no, it was Paranormal Activities by a pretty wide margin. And I don't know what I did to piss you guys off. I could probably take a few guesses, but this is mean. This was mean. Why would you do this to me? What did I do to make you want to make me watch the Paranormal Activities movies? This franchise sucked. This franchise straight up sucked. I can say with no hint of irony and without any qualifiers, I enjoyed the Ernest franchise more than this. I, I have a difficult time even ranking these because they're all so similar and so boring and so repetitive that it's like... <sighs> What even makes one better than the other? They're just trash. This is the closest I can get to a coherent ranking of them, but, like, they're all the fucking same. Like, last place could be third place, and it would make no difference to me. So, here is my attempt at ranking the Paranormal Activities movies. <sighs> Paranormal Activities The Ghost Dimension, the last film in the franchise, takes last place mostly just for being the last movie in the series. Like, the more you show me the same shit over and over and over and over again, the less I'm gonna like it. Like, Paranormal Activity 1 gets some points just for, like, being original. This is the sixth movie in the franchise. Do something different. Jesus fucking Christ. There's stuff at the ending I thought was pretty good. Like, they're, they're trying to, like, defeat the the paranormal activity-er. The, the paranormal that is doing the activity. So, that was something, at least, but too little too late, man. Like, <laughs> like I, I don't know, I kind of came into this movie pissed off. I just, it's, like, such a bad series, and the sixth movie does nothing. Does nothing to change things up. And it's just like, you know... I'm a lot more lenient on this type of stuff when I haven't seen it four times already. So, in Paranormal Activity, the ghost dimension that this family has moved into this nice house, and they find this old camera from the 80s, which happens to be the camera from Paranormal Activity 3. Uh, the footage filmed on that camera in this movie have a VHS filter that is noticeably missing 
from Paranormal Activity 3. It's all crystal clear HD footage in Paranormal Activity 3, but in this one it's VHS footage. And apparently this uh, camera can detect like this, the, the, the ghost demon. It's a demon, it's not a ghost. This, this demon ghost that has been haunting everyone for all of these movies. So it's the first one you actually get to see the demon ghost. Uh, and it's this poorly CG'd black slime monster. I should note, this camera could not detect the demon ghost in Paranormal Activities 3. And there's really no explanation as to why it suddenly can detect the demon ghost from Paranormal Activity 3. The poor CG was a nice touch. Like, it was something different. It was something to shake up the franchise. I'll take anything at this point. It, it also momentarily breaks the found footage uh, convention of the series. Like, they show footage from the end of the third movie, and then they just cut to this scene that is not being filmed. It's like a conventionally shot, like, like fictional, like a scene that is not being video recorded. And then it goes back to being a found footage franchise, and it's like, what? Why have that one scene in, in all six movies? I also feel like this movie relied a lot more on jump scares than the other movies. Um, Paranormal Activities has sort of a weird reputation of, like, overdoing jump scares, and I don't think that's fair. I think there's usually about one jump scare per movie, and they are all, like, legit jump scares. It's all actually something scary happening because there's nothing I cannot stand more than the fake jump scare. Like, oh, jump scare! Just kidding. It was the main character's son or something. I fucking cannot stand that shit. Paranormal Activities does not overdo it on the jump scares. Uh, that's the conjuring. Uh, ex except, except Ghost Dimension, which, I mean, even then... It's still not as bad as the Conjuring movies, but it, it is, it does happen several times in this movie. I don't know. It's bad. It's, it's bad and boring in all of the same ways all of these movies are. And it's like, if you can't think of something new to do after six goddamn movies, why are you making another movie? Stop making another fucking movie! Jesus Christ! In, uh, in part five, The Marked Ones, uh, they introduce the idea that these ghosts can potentially time travel, and it seems like there's some of that going on in this movie, and it's like, of all of the franchises to just abruptly introduce time travel, like, you, you don't want time travel in your franchise. Time travel's just gonna muck up the works. But this is a fucking horror franchise. This is not, like, action or sci-fi. This is ghost movies. And you're gonna introduce time travel to this shit. Also, the there's, there's a reveal in this that the... The coven that's summoned the demon that's been haunting everyone for all of these movies. Uh, they're, like, hunting down and killing children who were born on 6605. Because 05 is the sixth year of the new millennium. You guys remember 6606? I do. Um... Some of you might be too young to remember that, but on June 6th, 2006, like, people were freaking out. They're like, oh, the new Antichrist is gonna come back because it's 666. But no, according to the Paranormal Activities franchise, it was actually 6605 you had to worry about. The only thing cursed about 6606 is that the Omen remake came out. Ha <laughs> ha! I haven't actually seen the Omen remake, I can't, 
I can't say for sure that it's a bad movie. I mean, I assume it is. I do have a copy of it, but haven't watched it. Yeah, I didn't like this movie. Surprise. Moving on. Paranormal Activity 4. Um, this follows a new family. We, we follow the same family for the first three movies, and this one refocuses on a new family, although they're living right across the street from the girl from the first movie and the kid she kidnapped in the second movie. And in this movie, she and the kid she kidnapped, her, her nephew... Her nephew, whom she kidnapped, tricked the neighbor boy into coming over, and then they put the nephew's soul in, in the boy's body for reasons I am unable to parse. That's the thing about the Paranormal Activity franchise. Like, I can tell you what happens in all of these movies, but I am at an absolute loss to tell you why. I have... No fucking idea what's going on in these movies, okay? I have no clue what the villain's goals or motivations are. I know there's, like, a coven of witches who wants to, like, collect blood from children born on 6605 so they can summon demons. But there's so much stuff in these movies that I'm like, but why? Why would they do that? What advantage does that give them? How does that help them in achieving their goals? Four, much like six, gets pretty low ranking just for being, like, this deep into the series and not doing anything interesting or original. Which, I mean, not doing anything interesting or original kinda is the Paranormal Activities franchise, but this one, like doubly so. Like, there's some new stuff going on in the second and third movie. There's nothing new going on in the fourth movie. It's, it's just... It's, it's, it's nothing. It's such a nothing movie. It's such a nothing franchise. But it's, it's the fourth nothing movie in a nothing franchise. Fuck this movie. Can, can you guys tell I don't I didn't like this franchise? I'm upset. I didn't like this franchise. Yeah, basically the girl from the first movie and her nephew whom she kidnapped are living across the street from this family who are the main characters and the mom has some sort of medical thing so she has to be taken to the hospital so the kid can come live across the street with the neighbors. It's also got a bunch of, uh, horny teens doing stuff over the internet, which, um, just before I drunk tweeted the Paranormal Activities movies, I drunk tweeted Megan is Missing, and to be fair to the Paranormal Activities movies, none of them are near as bad as Megan is Missing. Megan is Missing is one of the worst fucking movies I've ever seen, like, I've seen a lot of bad movies, and Megan is Missing is fucking one out of ten. Like, like, Megan is Missing is really fucking bad. Like, bad, bad. These are just, like, nothing bad. That is bad, bad. And Paranormal Activity 4 was kind of giving me Megan is Missing flashbacks, and I'm like, hmm, don't like that. Don't want to be reminded that Megan is Missing is a movie. Fuck that movie. What else do you say? I mean, I did say some other stuff. I drunk tweeted these movies, obviously. And I am reiterating some of the points I made on Twitter, but also, like, there's a lot more jokes on Twitter. So if you want to go over to my Twitter, which, for the record, at Matt underscore presents, probably should have plugged that one up top, uh, at Matt underscore presents for all types of fun... Movie drunk tweeting. Every Monday night, drunk tweeting. Well, not every Monday night. Occasionally I take a break, but... Most Monday nights, drunk tweeting movies. I, I do not have much to say about Paranormal Activity 4. It's a shit movie in a shit franchise. Moving on. Ah! 
Paranormal Activity 3 is set in the 1980s, so that's why it ranks higher than 4 and 6, because it's set in the 80s. That is something. That is the slightest bit of originality. Uh, also, to be fair, there's some interesting stuff going on in this movie. They they have this thing where the guy, like, attaches a big, like, VHS camera to, uh, like, the top of a, a rotating fan. So the camera will, like, pan back and forth in the living room. And it's like... Like, like, that's an interesting and original idea for a Paranormal Activity movie, but it's like, why did you wait for the movie that's set in the 80s, where that technology would not exist, where you would have to go out of your way to justify that? Because if you had that in, like, the second movie or the fourth movie, it'd be like, yeah, yeah, there are security cameras that pan back and forth. This makes sense. In the 80s, there were not security cameras that pan back and forth. So you had to have a scene explaining that the guy mounted it to a fan. And it's like... Just save this idea for a time when it makes sense. You know? Weirdly, actually, uh, both 2 and 3 are prequels to the first film. Like, there's the first film, which is, like, set in 2006. And then the second film is set, like right before the first movie. Like, the second movie ends where the first movie begins. And then 3 is an even further back prequel set in the 80s. And it's about uh, the main character of the first movie and the main character of the second movie, who are sisters, as children. And the weird paranormal shit that went down when they were children. It, it's all shot on VHS cameras, but it has HD picture and immaculate sound like I was joking about in like the first and second movie it's security camera footage but for some reason security cameras in 2006 have just like pristine audio quality but then this one goes even further back in time and it's like why is the audio and visual of this so good so, there are ideas in this one that I like. I like the rotating camera thing, even if it doesn't make any sense. I like that it's even further back and that it's set in the 80s. There's a couple other things in this movie that make it a little more interesting to watch than 4 or 6, but... <sighs> At the same time, it is not... It's not substantially better or worse than pretty much any other movie in this franchise. <laughs> like, they're, they're all kind of the fucking same. Paranormal Activity 1, in third place. I'll give it credit. It's original. They, they, they managed to make a passable horror movie on next to no money, right? Like, points for creativity, point, points for working within your means. I hope the directors of this movie went on to much better things, because this movie is boring. This movie is just extremely boring and not interesting in the slightest. Like, barely anything happens all movie until, like, the very end. So, I'll, I'll give it some credit for some things. It's not nearly as bad as later films, but at the same time, it's boring. Like, this did not deserve a franchise, you know? I mean, I guess the reason it became a franchise is because it cost zero dollars to make, and it turned a giant profit. So, alright, fair enough, these movies are cheap to produce, and they made money, at least. The main character's boyfriend in this movie, I guess he's kind of the main character as well, he's the one carrying the camera most of the movie, 
Um, but his name is Micah. It's my brother's name. I have a friend named Micah. M-I-C-A-H. It's a name people have a lot of trouble with. And this movie mispronounces it every fucking time. No one pronounces it right in this movie. They all pronounce it Mika. It's not pronounced Mika. If you're gonna name a character in your movie something, know how to pronounce the name. It's Micah. I have never met a single person with that spelling of name who goes by Mika. And I know a couple people named Micah, including my own brother. That bothered me just a little, but also I, I kind of laughed at it because people have been fucking up my brother's name for like our entire lives. A lot of people think he's a girl for some reason. They think Micah is a girl's name. Usually the way they mispronounce it, though, is Micaiah, which... That's a little more understandable than Mika. Mika is just fucking wrong. So, in Paranormal Activity, uh, this girl, Katie, and her boyfriend, Mika, um, start noticing weird stuff going on in their house. And Katie's like, oh, weird stuff like this happened to me growing up. Oh, we had so many problems. Which, like, the sixth movie kind of contradicts by, like, showing that at some point they got kidnapped by a coven of witches and lived with the witches for years. And that just, like, never fucking comes up. Like, in the first couple movies, it kind of seems like they just had some run-ins with some weird paranormal stuff. But the sixth movie's like, nope, they lived with a coven of witches for years. And it's like, but did the witches erase their memory of that? Why do they not act like they know the things that are happening in these movies? Why are they not prepared for the things that are happening in these movies? So then they, they're like, oh, let's put up a bunch of security cameras and see what the bad thing happening is. And it's, it's demons. It's ghost demons. And then she gets possessed and kills Mika and runs off and, and kills her sister's family and kidnaps their child. But they don't reveal that till the second movie, so spoilers. Don't watch these movies. In this movie, they get a fucking Ouija board. And I was having none of that. I, I went, like, full fucking rant mode on Twitter. Because Ouija boards are not fucking scary. They're a piece of plastic with the alphabet on it, licensed by Hasbro. That was supposed to be, like... A parlor trick, right? It wasn't supposed to be, like, ghostly or, or demonic in any way. It wasn't supposed to be supernatural. It was just like, oh, here's this fun game we can play together. Oh, ask it a question, and oh, here's what it spells. Haha, -ha, fun times, you know? It's like a magic eight ball, right? It, it is effectively a more advanced version of the magic eight ball. Ouija boards are not fucking scary, okay? Stop trying to make them scary. I blame The Exorcist, right? Because there were a few people who kind of were like, ooh, spooky, scary Ouija board before The Exorcist. But in The Exorcist, they use a Ouija board, and that summons Pazuzu. So I feel like everyone's just been aping... The Exorcist, because The Exorcist had a Ouija board in it, and it summoned the demon in that movie, so everyone's like, Oh no! Ouija boards are cursed! They're haunted! They contact ghosts and demons! No, they don't! They're a piece of plastic licensed by Hasbro. If, if you use a Ouija board in your horror movie, I stop respecting you immediately. Unless you're the exorcist. The exorcist gets a pass because they started the trend. This this movie? No. Fuck you. Although, to be fair, 
this franchise gets increasingly silly with the things it tries to make scary. Like, in this movie, it's like, ooh, Ouija boards are scary. No, they aren't. But then, in the fourth movie, I think, no, the third movie, in the third movie, they try to make Bloody Mary scary. You know, the game children play at sleepovers to try to scare themselves. You're, you're going to try to scare me, an adult, watching an R-rated movie with a, a sleepover trick for children. No. And then the fifth movie tries to make a Simon Says toy scary. But we'll get to the fifth movie when we get to the fifth movie. So, um, yeah, no, don't use Ouija boards in your horror movie. They aren't scary and I won't respect you. And I, I, I respect paranormal activities for what it accomplishes, but it's boring and not very scary. Moving on. Paranormal Activity 2 gets the highest placement out of what I would kind of consider the main line Paranormal Activities movies, uh, part five is its own thing, uh, and frankly, you could probably talk me into putting it lower, but it, it had the most going on, in my opinion, like, more things happen in this movie than happen in any of the other movies, so, like, alright, Fine. Fair enough. You did something. Please don't take that as a recommendation of this movie. Like I said earlier, this is not substantially better or worse than any of the other Paranormal Activities movies. Like, all five of these just kind of run together. And, li like, you could show me a scene from any of them, and if if I couldn't tell by the characters in that scene... I probably wouldn't be able to guess which movie it was from. Like, like, I just finished watching all these movies. Like, I watched these over the last six weeks. And it's like, give me like a year, and I won't even be able to tell you which movie is which. I was actually having a little trouble before we started filming, because I thought the third movie was the fourth movie, and I had to refresh my memory on which movie was which. So, the second movie leads right into the first movie. It's like an immediate prequel. Um, and it's about Katie's sister, who's... She, she's... She's married this, like, rich dude, uh, and they, they've just had their first baby, and all of a sudden, weird paranormal things are happening... Christy, that's that's the girl's name, Katie's sister, Christy, uh, is her stepdaughter starts, like, looking into it, and she's like, ooh, it says here, like, you can make a deal with demons to get, like, untold riches, and, but, but it comes at the price of your firstborn son, and at this point, it's been established that, like, she and Katie used to do, like, weird rituals when they were a kid. Of course, the sixth movie contradicts that by saying they were part of a witch's coven f for the majority of their childhood, but ignore that for right now. Uh, she She's like, oh, you, you can make a deal for riches and it costs your firstborn son's soul. And they did, like, rituals when they were a kid, so you, as a perceptive audience member, are like... Ah, I see where this is going. She married a rich dude, and it's because she made some deal with a demon as a kid, and now the demon's here to collect. But then the movie tries to push this off as like, oh, her son is like the first male in generations in her family, which doesn't work. That's not how genealogy works. You, you, you can't fucking do that. Half of your ancestors are male. And I guess I kind of get what they mean. It, like, like, 
he's the first son of, of like she's a girl, her sister's a girl, their mother was a girl, and she only had female siblings. Their grandmother only had female siblings. Their great grandmother only had female siblings. Fine, fair enough, whatever. But don't say he's the only male in generations because that is not scientifically possible. And and they try to like push the blame back onto like one of her old ancestors. Like they were the ones who did it. And I'm like, excuse me, we already know that Christy did rituals and she married a rich guy. So like obviously she did the ritual to get a rich husband and now they're coming for her baby. Um and and then the movie ends with them trying to sort of like push the demon off onto Katie and and her house instead of their house which comes back to bite them in the ass because like like there's there's the shot that leads into the beginning of the first movie and then it like cuts to black and then it shows after the first movie Katie comes over to their house, kills all of them, and takes the son. Except the stepdaughter. She doesn't kill the stepdaughter. Uh, because the stepdaughter shows up in part five. But other than the stepdaughter, it's... She she kills everyone in the family and takes uh, the, the new son. And then switches his soul with another boy's for reasons I do not understand. But that was in the third movie, not this movie. So, like, so in the first movie, like, like, Mika is carrying the camera around and there's a point where he's, like, he's filming Katie and he just, like, zooms in on her feet and she's like, oh, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, what, you got sexy feet, haha. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, great, foot fetish content in Paranormal Activity. Then in the second movie... There's a sh there's shots early on of both female leads in this movie, both Christy and the stepdaughter. Both of them get like close-ups on their feet very early in the movie. And it's like, what the fuck? What is with this like foot fetish motif in these first two paranormal activities movies? And after that point, like it's a lot more subtle. But at that point, like, your brain has, like, switched to foot fetish mode. And it's like, there's a lot of shots in this movie that are filmed at very low angles. And the women in this movie are always barefoot for some reason. And so it's like, okay, subtle, more subtle at least, but what the fuck? Like... Like, there's so much foot fetish material in these first two movies. Why? So yeah, uh, Paranormal Activity 2. Better than the others, but not good. But Be better than the others, except for one. Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, is... A shining beacon of light in this horrendous franchise. It's it's the first one to really shake up the status quo. It's it's actually totally disconnected from the other movies. There's a brief cameo from the girl from the second movie, the stepdaughter from the second movie. And also I think the ending of this movie is them time traveling back to the end of the first movie but i've seen all six of this movies and i cannot explain that i i have no explanations so just ignore that part uh if you're gonna watch any movie in this franchise watch the marked ones and i'm not even tacitly endorsing this one it's, it's better, far, far better than all of the others. That does not make it good. It's, it's silly in parts, but also, like, way more is going on in this movie than any of the other movies.
Like, like it's definitely got the most interesting stuff going on. So, uh, the marked ones. I keep wanting to call it the fifth movie, but it is the, the Paranormal Activity: The Marked Ones. It's about this Mexican family who is like unreasonably stereotypically Mexican to to the point that one of the characters is just like walking around their house eating a plain tortilla with nothing on it. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? This is this is so obviously some white guy writing Mexicans. And there was a moment where I was like, I don't know, maybe this is genuine. Maybe this is genuine. And then I looked up the writer-director of this movie, and this is the writer-director of this movie, and I'm like, okay, nope, no, this is not genuine. This is not something someone was doing because they have any sort of connection to Mexican culture. This is fucking white guy bullshit. But, to its credit, that does make the film kind of funny. It's, it's kind of funny to see, like, how bad this movie is at interpreting Mexican culture. The main characters of this movie, and I mean, the main characters of most of these movies, commit crimes while recording them, but the main characters of this movie are way worse about it. They record themselves committing so many crimes, and it's like, why would you bring a camera to do this? Refilling on lemonade. I don't need quite as much because I'm almost done. So, um, there's this coven that's behind, like, all the shit that happens in, like, a lot of these other movies. And, get a little more in there. There we go. And this movie is about, like, other people affected by that coven. Like, it's something that doesn't tie directly into... The stuff the coven has done so far. A, it's nice to kind of break free of that. And B, there's definitely... It's, it's not just like, Ooh, there's a spooky ghost in our house. Let's set up a bunch of cameras. It the, like the ghost gives this kid like powers. And it's kind of like, Ooh, check out these cool powers I have because of a ghost. But you know, it's like slowly destroying his sanity because... He's fucking possessed by a ghost. So, yeah, a much more eventful movie than the other films, but also, like, much sillier than the other films. Like, the other movies are such boring nothing, and this one is both the most hilariously bad and just the best of the entire franchise. That is not a recommendation. I do not recommend you watch any of these movies, but if you are going to watch one of these movies, the one I recommend you watch is Paranormal Activities, The Marked Ones. Uh, it doesn't even tie into the other movies that closely, so you don't even have to worry about continuity. So that's the Paranormal Activities franchise. I hated it. Like, 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 that sounds harsh. Because it's not even like, they're not bad, bad movies, but they're so boring. They're so repetitive. They're just, uh, it's not fun to watch. Why do people watch these movies? Like, I don't know, with shit like, Saw. I get, or it's like Friday the 13th. Like, I get why people keep going to see all of the sequels they make to those. Because they can be really fun. This franchise is not fun. It's a pain. It's a slog. It's a chore to watch these. I'm upset at you people for voting for it. I didn't like it. I didn't like the Paranormal Activities movies. I do want to dab with paint, dab dab with faint praise. I've had a little to drink tonight. I do want to dab with paint. Ugh, I did it again. 
I did it again. I'm trying to say paint phrase. That's not what I'm trying to say. Faint praise. Take another drink. I do want to dab with faint praise here. Um, the stereotype of these movies is that they kind of... They, they use, like, silly things for scares, like, Oh no, a door closed! Oh no, a chair moved! And that doesn't happen in this series. That... I, I fail to think of a single moment in these films that is that fucking silly. The closest it gets is, like, in part three, there's a point where the demon ghost is, like, actually under a blanket, so it's, like, the blanket ghost, like, ooh. And to be fair, that seems a little tongue-in-cheek at that point in the movie. So yeah, I, I there's nothing as silly as, like, people stereotype these films for, and they are not just jump-scare fests, right? Like, there's at most one jump scare in all of these movies, except for Six, which has a couple. So, uh, other than Six, it's at most one. Some of them don't even have any jump scares, and I'm like, you know, that's that's... That's a bit of an unfair criticism for this franchise, right? It, it is not a jump scare fest, but that is a very low bar to clear. <laughs> the Paranormal Activities movies, they're boring, they're incoherent, they're not fun. I don't recommend them. And also, if you are a fan of this franchise, first off, why? But second off, don't get this box set. This box set is terrible. Every movie on here, except for, like, the last two, it's like, like, there's not even a main menu. It's white text on a black background. There's no special features. There's no special anything. It's just the movie and nothing else. This is a really disappointing box set. I do not recommend this box set. But of course, I also don't recommend these movies, so even if they put out a nicer box set, I still wouldn't get it. So, first off, I don't know when this video is gonna go out. I, I might have to push this back to July, even though I'm recording this pretty early in June. Um, I, I have a lot of stuff on my plate, so I don't know when I'm gonna get around to editing this. But over the next couple weeks, there are recent movies that I want to take a look at for drunk tweeting, finally. So I'm going to do Chaos Walking, I'm going to do Spiral from the Book of Saw, and I'm hoping I can do, uh, like, the Daily Wire's pro-gun school shooter movie. I want to drunk tweet that. I forget what that's even called. It's it's like fight, run, hide, or something. It's those three words, not necessarily in that order. Hide, hide, fight, run, run, hide, fight. That sounds right. Run, hide, fight. Um, and also, I never watched uh, Paul Blart Mall Cop Two, which I said I would. So I'll probably do Paul Blart Mall Cop Two. So that's at least four weeks of content. So maybe I'm already through those four weeks of content by the time this video goes up, but that's what I'm going to do next. And then after that, I've got another franchise to look at, because in that poll I posted, there was Fast and the Furious, Paranormal Activities, and then Something Else. And if Something Else had won, I would have reviewed... The Leprechaun franchise. But I knew if I put the Leprechaun franchise on that poll, it would win hands down. I probably should have. It might have kept me from watching the Paranormal Activities movies, but... This is what we're watching next. The, uh, Leprechaun movies. I have actually seen the first one this time, but... I've, I've only seen reviews of the second one, and I have no clue what happens in the other... Five. I think there's actually more than five. There's... There's one more that isn't in this box set, I think. I'm gonna have to look into that. 
But yeah, I'm going to drunk tweet the Leprechaun franchise and then I'm going to talk about it. So, looking forward to that. Um, until then, I am going to exercise my house of the boring demons of this movie. Spirits of uninterest, you are not welcome in this home. I banish you from this plane forever in the name of the violence and the sex and the drug-related content. Amen.